Hi, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm wrapping up everything that I read in July, which I participated in three readathons because I don't really know why. I made sure everything overlapped and that I was able to, you know, be pretty successful for my readathon, so I'm pretty happy with it. I did the Owls, the Book Junkie Trials, and the Reading Rush, and it was a time. So let's uh, just let's just get into it and see see what I read. And for each one, I'll be talking about like the challenges that I did for which readathon and all that jazz. I started off the month reading a new fave. When I read this, I was just absolutely enamored with it. I fell completely in love. And that is The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. This was for the Bunk Junkie Trials for the challenge Orc Grow, which is something gruesome, gritty, or gory. And for the Owls for Care of Magical Creatures, which is to have a land animal on the cover. And we have a bunch of birds, aka crows there. In the land of Sabor, the society is broken up into different castes. Fi is a part of the crow caste that have no inherent magic of their own. Instead, they are mercy killers for those being taken by a magical plague. However, when Prince Jasmir fakes his own death to escape an evil queen, he strikes a bargain with Fi. Ensure his safe passage and he will make life easier for the crows when he is on the throne. And so Fi's life becomes intertwined with both Jasmir and his body double Tavin. Tavin has always been in the shadow of Jasmir, but he may realize he doesn't want to be in the shadows of the prince any longer. Oh my god, I adore this book. I adore it. I love it. Five out of five stars. Like, ugh, so good. I just love that we have different sexualities and identities being represented in this book. It's just so cleverly done. We have a character, Tavin is pansexual and he explicitly states in the book that he likes people regardless of gender and Margaret Owen has said that Tavin is pan so that's awesome. It also has a very good commentary on class structure being that this book is based on a, a caste system where depending on the type of magic you have is where your place in society is and we have Jasmir who's at the top of society, he's a phoenix, he's firepower, he's royal, and then we have Fi who's at the bottom, she's crow, has no inherent magic, they only get their magic from the teeth of other dead witches. As Jasmir travels along with Fi and the other crows, he kind of opens his eyes to how this divide in society is driving their country apart. And there is a lot of important conversations about how those at the top have ignored those at the bottom and I thought it was such a good social commentary. Uh, and the characters were amazing. Fi is so fleshed out and you really feel her sorrow and rage at everything that she has been dealt in life. And Jasmir is definitely the sheltered prince and you can see where his ignorance comes through but where he's willing to learn. I do think that his character will get further developed in the next book because he's still kind of sheltered near the end and Tavin kind of being in the middle where he's not at the top cast he's a body double to a royal struggles with what he knows his duty is and what he thinks is right and just putting all three of these characters together just causes for such an explosive story and it's now one of my new favorites like I love this book so much and I'm so excited for the next one next up I read The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young and this was for the book junkie trial challenge of Old Pirate Cove a book that takes place at least in part on the sea Owl's Challenge of Potion, Next Ingredient Sequel. The Girl the Sea Gave Back takes place 10 years after the events of Sky in the Deep and it follows a new set of characters. We have Tovo who has washed up on the shores of the Svel when she was an infant and remembers barely anything of her old home except that she is a truth tongue with the power to cast stones and see the future and the Svel view her as an outsider but use her for her powers and as conflict grows with the tribe to the west. Her powers are used more and more and Tova questions if the war is really the right way to go. And we also get some perspectives from Halvard which is the little brother from Sky in the Deep so it's really cool to see how he's grown. Um, I ended up giving this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. Young's writing is really gorgeous and I love that she just sets the tone for this dark viking world really well. You can definitely tell that her books are thoroughly researched and that you have the different clans with their different belief systems just as it was back in the day and that she's really great at writing emotional character arcs. The thing that surprised me about Sky in the Deep when I read it last year is that the familial relationships really tugged at my heartstrings where it's going in I thought it was going to be just like a badass Viking story and I was surprised by how emotional it was and the same thing for this one. You really feel for Tova and how she struggles to belong anywhere at all and she struggles a lot with feelings of abandonment and just that she's being used all the time only for her abilities. And then on the other hand we have Halvard who really struggles with his 
belief that he can be a good leader. I also thought that this book veered a little bit more in the supernatural direction than Sky in the Deep is. Sky in the Deep, I would say, was purely YA historical fiction, whereas this one I would describe it as like a YA historical fiction fantasy where we get a little bit of elements of fantasy thrown in, which is cool because we didn't get that in the first installment. Where this book lacked for me is that the two main characters, I felt like there was a lot to be desired with their relationship. I felt like it just scratched the surface and it didn't really go where I wanted it to go. I just felt like if the book continued, maybe I would have seen their arc more fully or something like that, but I felt like it just ended very flat and it left me unsatisfied. Overall, the story is gripping and emotional, and if you enjoyed Sky in the Deep, I think you will definitely enjoy The Girl the Sea Get Back. Next up, I read The Chase by Elle Kennedy, and this is the first book in her spin-off of the off-campus series known as Briar U, and sports new adult romance series. We follow Summer, who is flighty and full of energy, and she basically has nowhere to live, so she must move in with her brother's friends, including Fitzy, who's like this nerd, jock, tattooed guy, very quiet and studious, and they are complete opposites. Summer is attracted to Fitzy, but he wants nothing to do with her, and it's just the story of how their paths collide. For Owls, this was for Charms, which is an adult book, and for the book Junkie Trials, it was for Dwarf Mountain, a book with a hint of romance, even though it, it was all romance. It wasn't just a hint. But I adore Elle Kennedy's writing. I adore this series. This was just so fun and steamy. I just love Summer's character. She's a complete spitfire. We also talk about how she has like a learning disorder and the struggles that she goes through with everyone thinking that she's just a spoiled rich brat when she really does try very hard but her learning disorder makes things difficult for her. And then like Fitzy is just like the introverted tattooed nerd jock of my dreams. He's amazing and I love that Summer brings him out of his shell and he kind of helps her with her insecurities. It's just a very cute relationship and I love the series. Okay, next I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, which is my new favorite series. So that I think really says a lot. This book is literally like a love letter to fantasies and libraries and I just adore it with every fiber of my being. For the owls, accounted for Herbology, which is a book with a plant on the cover as you can see we have all these thorns and vines. And for the book Junkie Trials, accounted for Glimmer, which is a book with a beautiful cover because I mean, look at that cover it's gorgeous elizabeth was a foundling in the great library of ostomir and she's grown up her whole life around magical spell books they are known as grimoires and they are basically sentient books and the librarians are charged with taking care of them and making sure the dangerous ones don't escape. Elizabeth has dreamed her whole life of becoming a warden and taking care of the most powerful spell books. However, when a spell book is unleashed and Elizabeth is framed for the crime, she must turn to a sorcerer who she has been led to believe is evil her whole life in order to unravel the centuries old conspiracy theory working against her and like this but I mean obviously five out of five stars but like this book is just like has elements of everything that I love I mean the setting is a magical library and the banter between the two main characters the conspiracy that they're unraveling and it's just like an epic fantasy but a standalone and it just is so satisfying and I love it I love the characters I love how fierce Elizabeth is and I love how sarcastic Nathaniel is and don't get me started on Silas because he is like the best demonic sidekick ever and also the fact that like her writing really transports you there like you feel that these books have feelings and they're sentient and uh, the fact that Elizabeth is known as the agent of chaos is just like the best thing ever like she just attracts trouble wherever she goes and but she faces it head on and she's fierce and bold. And Nathaniel's hiding a lot of emotional pain that he covers up with sarcasm, but we get to dig deeper into her character as we go. And I just like love seeing all of the relationships between the characters develop and like just, it puts me in my feels. Like the whole time I was reading this book, I was like, this is the book for me. Like it just has everything that I love and I adore it. And um, please, please read it. And if you would like, this is our pick for the Overhyped Book Club for August. And we will be having a live show at the end of the month to talk about it. And you already know it's my fave. So I think there could be some interesting conversations that we have about it. Next, I read The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill for the Book Junkie Trial Challenge of the Draconic Isle for the cutest dragons ever. And this is about Greta who discovers a lost tea dragon at the market one day and stumbles upon these tea dragon caretakers. And as she befriends them in their shy ward, she is 
brought into the world of tea dragon husbandry it is the cutest thing and has just like the most amazing messages with the most beautiful art style i love it and um i'm adopting a chamomile tea dragon because it's my favorite thing ever like if you just want a heartwarming little graphic novel with the cutest illustrations and really wonderful messages like please pick this one up you won't regret it it's just fills my heart with joy. <laughs> Next up, I read Stardust by Neil Gaiman, which was the bookie grail for the Book Junkie Trials, aka the group book. In the idyllic town of Wall, nothing really happens. Tristan Thorne is searching after the heart of Victoria Forrester, and when she commands that he go and bring her back a falling star, he goes over the wall to go and get the star. And so adventures ensue. I gave this one a four out of five stars. It was a very whimsical fairy tale. I loved the movie as a kid and I haven't seen it in like years and bits and pieces of it came back to me as I was listening to the audiobook. It was a very short audiobook. It has Neil Gaiman's signature style for sure that just like this very whimsical fairy tale with um, kind of like a cautionary tale as well because we kind of see Tristan learn how to stop being like so naive because in the beginning he was kind of annoying and then as the story went on he got like less so annoying and yeah it was just it was just a really nice cute little fairy tale and the audiobook was actually narrated by Neil Gaiman himself which I was unaware of until I got to the end of the book so I always love it when authors narrate their own work because you know the little inflections on the voices and stuff are exactly as they picture it in their head. Next up, I read The Risk by L. Kennedy, which is the second book in the Briar U series. This one was for the Book Junkie Trials Challenge of the Forgotten Forest, next in a series. Brenna is the Briar University's hockey coach's daughter who must fake date the captain of the Harvard hockey team, Briar's nemesis. She has to date him in order to score an internship, but for every fake date, he wants a real one. Oof, this one, five out of five stars. It may be my favorite so far. I just loved Brenna and Jake both as characters and there was a lot of emotional depth that went into the story. It seems very surface level at first and then as the characters develop feelings for each other you get to learn about kind of the emotional traumas of their past as they're opening up and it always is a very poignant story and I think that's what makes Al Kennedy one of my favorite romance writers is that it just seems to have a more of an emotional depth to the story. And uh, the chemistry was just fantastic. Next up, I read Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, which was for the Book Junkie Trials Challenge of the Giant Squid, read an intimidating book. And this was intimidating because it was the July pick for the Overhyped Book Club. We have a whole live show that we did over on Majel's channel, so I will link that below. Please go check it out if you want a full like hour-long discussion on this book. But because we had that discussion, I have so much to say to it. First, let me just give you a little summary. In a Slavic-inspired world, we follow three characters. Nadia, a girl that can speak to the gods in her head. Seraphin, a prince surrounded by desperate shoulders and potential assassins. And Malakiaj, a monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes. And together they must come together to form a plot to kill the king and stop the country from plunging into full out war. So like I really wasn't sure how this book was gonna go. It got a lot of hype and then people were like, eh, it's not worth the hype. And then I got a lot of hype again and I ended up giving it five out of five stars. Um, I just think that this, it was so captured and imaginative. We'll compare this to Shadow and Bone. And even though she definitely draws a lot of inspiration from Lee Bardugo, I don't think this is really much like Shadow and Bone at all, besides the fact that they're both like Slavic Russian inspired. Um, it really stands on its own. And I think the world and the religion is one of the coolest things because the religion really shapes the world. We have in Nadia's land, the gods whispering in people that have magics head and the way that they get magic is the gods grant them the power whereas in the other country where seraphim is from they are blood mages so just be aware that this book does have very strong triggers for self-harm because it is all about blood magic and these two forces of magic are opposed to each other and that is the tension that causes the war nadia can be so naive at times and she is she's written to be naive and we really get the world through her perspective and then as we kind of find out what is happening in the world at large we see that the the war and the religions like aren't as simple as it seems and i thought the religion system informing the war was just one of the most clever religious systems i've seen in the world and the fact that the magic is drawn from religion is really cool i like love the character seraphin i definitely think we're gonna get more development from him in the next book because it's supposed to be like seraphin's book and there is just some imagery with him in the end of the book. Like there's a chapter that I just thought the whole thing was absolutely beautiful. 
the ending of this book shocked me like i wasn't sure how to feel about it but i definitely need to pick up the next book right away like i have so many theories about what's going to happen and this is definitely a book that made me really invested like i want to know what happens next i think it's a really strong debut with just such like rich world building and really interesting and cool characters and of course the the religion and magic aspect i think is my favorite part of this book okay so moving on now to what i read during the reading rush the first book that i read was waiting for spring volume one by anna shin and this is the first ever manga i've ever read i can't believe i've never read manga before but i'm really kind of excited to get into it because it's so cute um this manga follows mitsuki who longs to have friends and when she starts high school she's determined to befriend people and she's having a hard time except when the four most popular boys um, in the school that are on the basketball team come into the cafe where she works and she is drawn into their friend group and now she has to navigate everything that comes along with being in with the popular boys and now an exciting high school life maybe awaiting this former wallflower and this was just so cute um this one was for the book empty trial empty barrel in an indulgent book and the reading rush book read a book with purple on the cover because of this purple jacket um yeah i just like really it took me a little bit to get into like knowing how to read manga because it's obviously the opposite direction of every book i've ever read in my entire life and it, it was just like it was just so cute and heartwarming and you really feel for mitsuki like not having any friends and not knowing how to make friends and it just it's a little slice of life comic and I, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I read the Tea Dragon Festival, which is a prequel comic to the Tea Dragon Society. And I got this one on Net Deadly and I had to read it immediately, so I used it for the book, book Junkie Trial Challenge of the Dragon Deep, Rich World Building, and the Reading Rush Read a Book in the same spot the whole time. And I read it pretty quickly, like um, the digital arc of my computer in, in one spot. So the Tea Dragon Festival follows Rin, and they lives in this remote mountain town where they have all of these little tea dragons that are just like communal part of the town and they discovers a sleeping dragon that is supposed to be the guardian of this town and so they help the sleeping dragon assimilate into life i mean it was just more of the same adorableness and we see some characters from the tea dragon society in their youth and I, I just I loved it. It's such a cute and heartwarming series. I hope there's more because I need more and I loved the regular chamomile dragon tea but the mountain chamomile dragon tea has sass on another level and I'm adopting one. Next up I read Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. This was for the Book Junkie Trials Challenge of the Elven Guard, which is about military or political, and the Reading Rush read a book with a non-human main character because they are aliens. And this is about a couple that are from opposite sides of a never-ending galactic war, and they come together and have a baby, and now they must escape the forces that are trying to stop them from living a happy family life. And it has really beautiful art, but it is an adult comic, so just like be aware of it that it can be pretty graphic. And I gave this one four out of five stars. I thought it was a very cool introduction into the world of Saga and the aliens. And I just like love that this is based on a little family coming together across the different sides of war. And I'm excited to see where this series goes in the future. Next up, I read the second volume of Waiting for Spring. And this one just like kept bringing the cuteness. And um, I saw like some like manga tropes in here. And I, apparently manga has like its own set of tropes that I don't even know about. So I kind of confused me for a little bit but then I like then I got it and like it just increased the spice and the drama and again it was just more of the same cuteness and this one was for the book junkie trials apothecary towers which is pick a random book and the reading rush book with five or more words in the title because we we're waiting for spring volume two so next up I read onyx and ivory this one is about a girl they call trader kate because her father attempted to kill the king and now she is living on the outskirts of society part of the relay which delivers messages across the kingdom in this kingdom night drakes which are wingless dragons will attack at night the thing with kate is that she is a wilder born with illegal magic and the ability to control animals one day kate comes across a caravan that has been massacred by night drakes however in the day and the only survivor is corwin a prince to the crown of rhyme and kate's first love and so they are brought back together and they must find out who is creating these 
beets that attack during the day and leading to the unstability of the country. And this one was for read a bookumentary last year and the queendom stone a book about royalty i really i gave this one four to five stars i really enjoyed that it had a romance that focuses on like a second chance romance because that's not very common in fantasy where we have these two characters that were in love and then they were separated by circumstance and now they must come back together and learn how to get back on their footing together and also <laughs> this is like a horse girl fantasy like if you like horses i think you'll love this book because i mean you can look at the author photo you can definitely just tell that Arnett has a deep love of horses and that transfers to Kate because she always is working with the horses and she has this connection to them because of her magic and it's really cool. We have a very divided magic system where we have traditional mages and the more elemental wilders as they call them and this is driving conflict in the country and then i also just loved the storyline of prince corwin and how he must prove himself worthy of the throne and overall there's like a big mystery about like how these day drakes are appearing and what what is going on in the kingdom and it's just a really fun cool inventive fantasy story next up i read the hate you give by angie thomas i listened on audio this one was for the book junkie trials challenge of the weeping falls a tearjerker and the reading rush in author's first work. Star Carter's life completely changes when she witnesses her friend who was unarmed be shot down by a police officer. Caught in between the worlds of the ghetto where she lives and the privileged white neighborhood where she goes to school, Star must decide if speaking out is worth everything it could potentially cost her. Uh, I gave this book five out of five stars. It was so poignant and emotional and really educational. Um, this book is based on the Black Lives Matter movement and I just think that this, it, it's really important literature that gives you a way to understand what's going on through a, a story and I think that sometimes that can be a more effective tool for teaching someone about a movement because you connect with the characters and you form the sense of empathy and it was just horrible to see what happened and the way that Khalil's case was handled and what Star had to go through as the witness and her reluctance to come out, the way that she was treated by her white friends and just like everything that went along with it. I just thought it was such a powerful story and it's really something that I think everyone should read. I think everyone can benefit from reading it and everyone can learn. I felt like I definitely learned when I read it and I feel more educated on the Black Lives Matter movement now and it's just really a really important read and last but not least i read percy jackson and the olympians number one the lightning thief by rick riordan this was for the book junkie trial challenge of crimson peaks which is to reread a book and the reading rush book to movie adaptation i didn't end up watching the movie i watched the trailer so like it counts so percy jackson finds out that he is a demigod aka his father is a god and he is sent to camp half-blood where all this stuff is going on like zeus's lightning bolt was stolen and all these monsters are coming after percy and so he must team up with his friends to go on a mission and retrieve the lightning bolt and it's just like such a fun nostalgic time i read the series like so long ago when i was little and and like i love greek mythology and having this little middle grade book that can teach you more about it i'm really excited to rediscover the series and continue on because i think i i didn't read all of them when i was younger and i wish that i had so now that i'm an adult i can read them and it's just really fun to read middle grade i think you can pick up a lot more the lessons that are supposed to be like kind of layered in here that you don't realize when you're a kid when you're an adult you can actually like realize that oh this is what this book is teaching you and i'm excited to learn more about it and just to continue on the series have the nostalgia and learn more about greek mythology it's just a really fun time so with that being said that is all of the books that i read in july it was a lot i think it was 15 books total and i completed 15 out of the 17 challenges for the book junkie trials completed all the challenges for the magic zoologist's career in the owls and then for the reading rush i completed all the challenges so it was it was a lot i really try and structure my tbrs for these readathons that it would be things that i would be wanting to read anyways so that it's not like i'm going completely off of what my mood will be <laughs> yeah i just had a lot of fun let me know what your experience was like in july like what readathons you participated in what your favorite read of the month was all that good stuff and in the meantime have some fun read some books i'll catch you guys in the next one